ready. Okay, I made it just in time. Why? Because I was still getting ready. Um, welcome to Intimate Conversations, Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas. I am your host, Danny Terrell. In a second, we're going to bring in our Miss Eve Sanford. I made it on time, y'all. Y'all have no idea how proud of myself I am right now because I made it on time. Eve, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Just made it by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> Same. I was like, let me make sure that I am ready for this today. Because I'm doing That's multiple. what I would say. <laughs> I was doing multiple things. <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to beat my face. I ain't gonna even lie. I, it ain't like I did something amazing. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> it's all good. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> I am glad you are here with us. I'm just trying to type in some stuff really quick. Okay. And then we are going to get started. Um, welcome, everybody. This is our last, our last um, one of the year. Um, I'm excited. I ain't going to even lie. I, I'm tired, y'all. Like most Black folks right now, we are exhausted. We are tired. Um, and I'm glad I'm ending this with Eve Sanford. Um, this is a good way to end it. So <laughs> I, I'm... It's going to be some Midwest, Detroit, Chicago stuff going on right now. <laughs> um, this, yes. <laughs> Just a little bit of business. Uh, we are on the traditional land and the traditional home of the Coastal Havens people, the Duwamish tribe. They were killed. They were brutalized. They were stripped of their lands. And we want to honor that. Um, we want to honor the fact that without them, we would not be able to be here today. We also want to honor the fact that we come from enslaved African people who endured countless acts of torture and humiliation during and after the Middle Passage, and we are still facing that today. Um, we honor the Duwamish people. We honor our enslaved African ancestors with the work that we do today. So I just wanted to lay that groundwork. Um, and talk to our guest, um, Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas is a nonprofit organization solely dedicated to presenting emerging Black arts, artists, and ideas in the Seattle area. We believe in the value of community, creativity, identity, and passion. These values serve as our strategic frame and guide our day-to-day -day operations and program decisions. We have the one, the only, <laughs> the baddest person <laughs> in Seattle. Stop. <laughs> you know it's real, E. Sapper. That's me. Uh, That's me. You're supposed to be modest, though. I'm like, no. <laughs> Don't be modest. Like, why be modest? Oh you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't see that. <laughs> right, right, right. You who, me? Not me. Oh, my God, like, no. <laughs> Um, this, uh, this season on Intimate Conversations, I've asked each guest to talk about what Black love looks like for them. Eve said Black love is complex, nuanced. Black love is, in some moments, the process of undoing many layers of harm, hate, and pain. It is also rooted in the comfort of the familiar. The moment of bodies, I'm sorry, the movement of bodies, it is gestural. I can say that word right. It is the thickness of our language. <laughs> you can hear it. It is tasteable, touchable, and loud, yet it can also feel delicate and ephemeral. 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 See, ephemeral. <laughs> you know, that education means something when you Sorry, don't have I'm it. I'm sprinkling art school all up in here. Okay. No, you know, look, I am, I am who I am. And so I will get some stuff right. I will get everything wrong. I will get some stuff right and everything wrong. And that is who I am. <laughs> and, we lo and we love you just the same, boo-boo. Okay. Thank you. Yes, we love you too. <laughs> you are a multidisciplinary artist, educator, and arts leader. Eve is a Chicago native who connect whose connection to the city and memory drives much of the voice behind her work. 
She worked nearly 20 years teaching visual and performing arts in Chicago, public and charter schools and various community centers, museums, and programs. Eve is also the director of programs for Pratt Fine Arts Center in um, Seattle, Washington, vice president of the board of directors of Shunpike. Eve is currently an artist in residence at the James and Janie Washington Foundation. Um, you graduated with an MFA from Seattle University and a BFAAE from the School of Art, in of Art Institute of Chicago. Um, what and who are you bringing into the space today? Um, my whole self. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hope so. You know what I'm saying? Bringing my whole self, all the things. Um, <laughs> I, love I mean, it. what what am I bringing? I mean, openness. You know what I'm saying? The conversations, the vibes. I don't. You know what? What do y'all need today? That's <laughs> we just need you to be you. That's it. We just need you to be you. That's it. You know. That's you know. Right. That's all day. Oh, Earth. Facebook and change. I mean, Instagram and change. They they Instagram live. Yeah, I'm saying like this is not the way that it. I was works. like, wait, y'all. I have options. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, there's things happening that I didn't realize was happening. Yeah, Hi, everybody out there. Okay. It gives me the options for filters. That's okay. I, oh, you know, I was like, oh, okay, cute. Wow. I didn't have to okay, do Instagram. <laughs> they bumping up their game. Um, I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm always here for it, you know. <laughs> um, you grew up in Chicago in a family of artists. Did. Well. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Like, yes, yes. A family that, that appreciated the arts, absolutely. Um, and mm -hmm. definitely invested in that and made sure that I had pathways to that very early on. So, yeah. definitely, yeah. Did you think that Yes, art is the thing that I'm going to do. Oh, absolutely. I decided in, in kindergarten. Like, uh, my kindergarten graduation, they asked all the kids what they wanted to be. And, like, uh -huh. it's, it's somewhere in my mama's house is, <laughs> is my <laughs> kindergarten graduation little booklet. And it says that I want to be an artist. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and so I knew very early on what my path was, like, what, yeah. you know, what drove me as a human being to feel like grounded in the world and like complete, like that's a, it was a ridiculous privilege to realize that really early on. Um, and I, for the most part, have stuck to it. There was a moment in like fifth grade where I thought I'd be a marine biologist. <laughs> Pleading dream, I don't mess with the girl, the girl sciences and the maths, those are not my friends. Uh, but I had a moment, I loved animals and, and the ocean and stuff. And I was like, this is what I will do. Right. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love that it. was a that was a fleeting moment. But um, yeah, the arts are always something that um, mm -hmm. I just I felt really deeply connected to. Um, like I said, I had the privilege of my parents being super invested in that. Our my childhood home was filled with black art, and right. um, they were like, "Oh, y'all bored? Here's a theater program. Here's a dance program." <laughs> We gonna right. sign you up for tap. We gonna sign you up for African dance. You are gonna do Dunham. You are gonna study ballet. Like there's, yes, yeah. My sister and I um, had the privilege of just being really just engaged with the arts from super early on, and mm -hmm. it was just like it was what we did. We were not sport kids, you know. <laughs> right. Nobody's basketball or track, but we definitely had an art program or multiple to go to. Um, I love it. My entire childhood. So yeah. That's awesome. Did you know like what you did you know what direction your art was going to take you or what path or it was just like here's art and you were just shooting guns like whatever land. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I mean I knew I really liked to draw. Like for the most part it was two D was the land that I was in. Um mm -hmm. but I was really like enamored like I was just so interested in a little bit of everything which made when it mm -hmm. came time for me to go to college made me super confused um <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea what I wanted to do so yeah I knew making things was um was for me but I just did not know where like what direction to go in um mm -hmm. so that that was a confusing moment for me um and, and it's ultimately why I ended up in education first because I was like 
here I am, like, 18, 19, 20, and I'm confused about what medium I want to study. And that's because I had access to so many amazing arts programs, yeah. right? And so many amazing arts teachers. And I was like, okay, well, maybe that's the lane to go into. Because I realized that, I mean, 98% of all the programs that I was a part of were gone. Like, I used mm -hmm. to be able to walk to ballet and tap class in my neighborhood. Right. I, that's not a thing, you know what I mean, anymore. No. Um, yeah, like, all the programs that I was a part of had, for the most part, disappeared. And I was like, that sucks. And I see how my, I saw how my neighborhood and my community changed. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, I just need to, like, give that back. Like, that's, that's my calling. And so that's what I, mm -hmm. that's what I did for, like I said, the, almost 20 years or so so yeah <laughs> that's where I, love that. I got confused and I was like well that I'll, I'll start where I got where I began and that's right. arts programming so why do you think it's important for especially black children children of color to have art accessible in their neighborhoods because I grew up in a space where I had to travel 20 30 minutes for something and so I didn't you know and and it made me appreciate it, but I think it would have been different if it would have been like something I could walk to. Why do you think that's important? I mean, not to get like a very after school special, like dramatic, but like <laughs> it literally, like it's, I feel like it saved my life. Like mm -hmm. I had the choice to like walk around the neighborhood and find trouble to get in, which there was all of that. You know what I right. mean? <laughs> it was all of that. Or I could walk over to this little storefront and like sit my behind down and draw for three hours. Do you know what I'm saying? And so then that yeah. was oh. it. And so I learned Photoshop and Illustrator really early on. And then we were like making logos for businesses. And so I was learning a little bit about what it meant to be like a contract artist. So, I mean, it's just developing skill sets, like the arts, as we know teaches us right. so much more than just how to create things. It teaches us how to collaborate. It teaches us how to problem solve. Um, exactly. I mean, there's so, there, was, there was so much connected to it. I had the opportunity to make meet artists and like we were on the news and like had the, it. it was just like I was going to like pitch meetings for logos at like 14. So, mm -hmm. or, or being a part of mural projects, which kind of have a thing about youth meal projects but whatever <laughs> like <laughs> even still because you know, yeah. everybody wants to sprinkle in everybody's neighborhood for the brown children to do like we'll just get some kids to paint a mural and then what right, <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway <laughs> I <digress. laughs> bringing back my point um, yeah yeah like I, ultimately I think it saved my life it gave me a sense of direction it taught me how to deal with people um and it kept me out of trouble like it kept me super focused right um and so i think that that is like the most important thing when you're in those right. when you're when you're a child when you're a young person and you're trying to figure out life right mm -hmm. and you you need skills um, yeah. and what other skills are there better suited for like a young person than to learn how to collaborate and focus you know what right. I mean? <laughs> Exactly. Like it's, you, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Right. I agree with you. You said something and, and this was, you brought up today and this is something that I know that you've mentioned before, but your parents were really invested in you as a young child and art. Yes. Again, I, just for people listening and understanding, like, why was that so important? Why is it important from that level? that parents need to like, you know, great basketball, great all of those things that parents generally focus on. But it's something about parents being invested in children as an artist. I'm, I'm grateful because I had the same experience. My parents were invested with me as an artist. But from your point of view, being an artist now, why was that such an integral part of your career path? It's so hard. To, it's, it's really hard to put into words. And I think ultimately for them, they... Um, it was a way to really connect myself and my mm -hmm. sister, um, connect us to our culture. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like I said, our house was like, we have all the black art, you know what I mean? There's like 
uh, screen, like Prince of the Moors and like right. um, books by James Van Der Zee and James Baldwin on the coffee table. And there's just like Egyptian art and like art from mm -hmm. all, like all the black artists, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and I think it was really important for them to just like make sure that we understood what it meant to be black children and mm -hmm. not only what it meant to be black children, but like to see it as something that was amazing and beautiful and like yeah. nuanced, right? So, we, I mean, right. we had board games about black history facts. You know what I mean? Like, what? Ever, like that was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember my friends would come over and like, I'd be like, oh, we have Monopoly and we have Black Facts, the board game. You know what I mean? Right. Like, what is this? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I love it. Yeah. And I think and I think just putting us into the arts was just another way to expose us to blackness because we took drumming, African drumming and um, right. African dance at this this place called the ETA um, on the on the south side and it was just like a black theater mm -hmm. like very similar to a cd forum right they put on black yeah. they put on black plays um and on on weekends you send your kids there to study uh african drumming and uh, african like west african dance and and done right. so yeah it was just yeah, a way to connect, connect you know i did a little dunham, <laughs> I did a little dunham for a couple years <laughs> It was a way to connect us to, to our culture and just to show us different aspects of that and to keep us busy and give us, they literally were giving us everything that they didn't have. Mm. I was like, there's, I was like, I, I want to get into this without, without getting into this, but like get my parents met and like grew up in the projects and yeah. like, it was stuff that they didn't have access to. And so once they, you know, decided to have a family and come together, they were like, mm -hmm. This 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 is how I want to raise my children up, right? These are the, yeah. these are the things and the resources that I want them to have, and how I want them mm -hmm. to be grounded as as young black people. So, yeah, love it. <laughs> Thank you for that. That I I think that's really important. You um in your bio you said that Chicago is a, a, a influence with your art. Um and I I think if you grow up in those type of cities, like you just can't help but to have that as part of, of your artistic practice and what you create. How, what are some of those nuggets that, you, that you've taken from Chicago and placed them inside of your art? Oh, that is so hard to quantify into a sentence. <laughs> I mean, I think, <laughs> I think the city is so, it's just so integral to who I am as a person. And I think mm -hmm. art in the same way is very connected to who I am as a person and I don't necessarily know how to separate them. Like, <laughs> they're yeah. very much about who I, you know, the core of me that is very Chicago cultural. Um, right. That's like how I speak and how I like navigate the world and like express myself and interact with people. Yes. Um, I think there's a certain like <laughs> big cityness, you know, <laughs> right. that, that I, that I kind of stuff around with. And I think the same is very true for the work that I make. <laughs> like it's, it's very like, oh God, I don't really know how to explain it. It's connected to how I think about people. I think Chicago mm. is a place that is very large, but also has a really like small town like feel yeah. to it um, and really connected feel to it. And like when I'm thinking about work, it's so much about community and like the little small community that I have within this big city, but like those, right. those particular personalities, right? Um, and I think those are maybe the ways that it shows up the most. Um, in a lot of ways, it was also just me documenting the city mm. as a photographer early on, too. Like, most of my mm. work is, like, it's, like, love letters to the city. It's, like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's documenting how, the like, the beautiful sunsets in, in Chicago um, and just, like, how much soul is in the architecture and in those little spots of nature um, in right. the, that, that are hidden and nobody knows about. So, yeah, I think that's those Thank are some you. ways that it shows up. Thank you. And and was that is that hard to manifest living in Seattle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in what ways is in that hard ways? to manifest? 
<laughs> I think for me, the the biggest way is in how I find community. Mm. Um, I think, cu- ooh, huh, culturally, I mean, I, <laughs> I love Black people, right? But, but there's a difference and how it feels and how we operate, I think, as Black people in different parts of the world yeah. <laughs> and of the Americas. Yes. <laughs> yes. Seattle versus Chicago, right? And so right. I have, I've had an interesting um, experience navigating and finding people that felt as comfortable, um, as familiar as the type of Black folks that I'm used to. Right, that's mm-hmm. been a thing. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was like, I'll just, I might just leave that there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put a pin in that one. Put a- Community feels different, right? And I think yeah. there's there's a lot of reasons for that, right? In places mm-hmm. where you don't have the biggest numbers and you have um, an experience of being um, pushed out of the little small neighborhood that you have like it's gonna probably feel less secure to like feel connected to people to trust people Mm -hmm. maybe um and i feel like that's kind of my experience here but i'm from a place where like there's so many of us right (laughs) exactly Exactly. i don't don't think we are um as like hesitant to um like trust each other in, in ways sometimes in community i don't know I don't know because yeah. we don't we don't feel like our neighborhoods are as a, I don't know threatened mm-hmm. by, out, by outsiders. You know what I'm saying? Right. Maybe that's that's real. Yeah, maybe that's a part of it. Um, yeah, I've been trying to like figure out what like what are mm-hmm. the, what am, what is it that I'm experiencing? Like what are the what are these different layers um, in my conversation right. with folks from here um, and just like weighing the differences. That maybe feels right. like one of them. I don't know. <laughs> in five I'm years, that's, how, that's what I've kind of come up with in the last Right. Year, so, yeah, like I mean, that. I think that's, that's really good. And just uh, for those that are watching, um, if you want to throw Eve some cash, I pinned her information. Uh, Venmo is E as in Eric, J as in James, S as in Sam246. That's Venmo. Cash app is dollar sign, E is an Eric, B is in Valerie, E is an Eric, Y, D, O, E, S, I, T, cash app. So you, I believe in paying black black artists yeah. um, all the coins. It's Christmas time. She needs to, like, shop for whatever she needs to shop for. It ain't none of your business <laughs> or mine. Oh, um, <laughs> just... <laughs> You know, yes, she's holding down the job, but she can hold down some more jobs. This is a job itself. So just give her money. I'm just saying, like, it needs to be some cash apps and Venmo's ringing on her phone at the point in time. Um, I'd love that. (laughs) You know, pay black women. Let me start there. Forget about that. Pay black women every time they open their damn mouths. (laughs) Okay, next. (laughs) Right, <laughs> you know, like, um, you recently um, did a collaboration with Noel Price and Price Arts. Um, what is the importance? And first, can you talk a little bit about what the collaboration was? And what is the importance of collaboration? When I first moved to Seattle, there was not a lot of Black folks collaborating with people. And that was 2008 I moved out here. And now we see more people collaborating. So what is the importance of collaboration? I mean, I talked about this early on, right? It's one yeah. of those skills that the arts teach us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's one of those 21st century skills, amen. Um, yes. What is the importance of that? I mean, it because it is a part of everything that we do. It's not only important for, for us as artists to right. be able to acknowledge the learning that we do from each other. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> right. To, yeah. to be able to do that, <laughs> to be able to do that kind of on the front end as collaborators out loud, mm-hmm. right? But it also just kind of teaches us lessons about the ways in which we pick up information in other ways that aren't as kind of upfront on the back end collaborating. Right. 
Um, and it's and it moves with us throughout our lives and everything that we do. Um, whatever mm -hmm. your job is, when you're not making something that's beautiful, a, an art object, you're going to need mm -hmm. to <laughs> to collaborate. It's just like a human being good trait to have. So right. of course it's essential. Uh, right, yes. <laughs> One of my friends just commented. Yes, and she, she graduated from the Art Institute. Another awesome teacher. Hey, girl. Yes, 21st century skills. Collaboration. Hey. Uh, yeah, it's just amazing. So that piece with uh -huh. Noel, um, it came about earlier in these uh, pandemic times. <laughs> um, and it came out of just I mean it was a really it was a response to now right to mm -hmm. the time we you know we quarantined together we share a home and um we both make art of course like I'm a visual artist uh and Noelle is a dancer and just in getting to know her um mm -hmm. it was really connecting me to my childhood experiences in dance but I'm, I'm right. just like farther removed from it and um we were just getting inspired by each other, sharing, sharing space and sharing more time than right. we've ever shared before because we just in the house, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we were just talking about music and dance and having this experience of as creatives together. Um, and we were mm -hmm. playing music and I played a song and then I had you know, sometimes when I'm making things, I have these visions. I call it like right. a very that's so raven moment. And so like we're right. playing this, I'm playing this music for her and I get like a flash and I literally see a performance and I see costumes and I, it, like a story comes to me very quickly. Love it. And I'm like, oh, it would be so cool if like one day, <laughs> like, <laughs> one day we do this thing. And she's like, uh, no, not one day. Let's just do it now. And I was like, okay, right. uh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've, because I've been so far removed, like I've been an admin, you know, and like right. being, helping artists get resources or have access to space to do their things. I've been a little bit kind of farther removed from making my own like art art. Yeah. Uh, I was, so I was going to let it live in a notebook and be a drink <laughs> five years later. Uh, but Noelle pushed me. That's that cool thing about collaborating and like right. you know, building with people um, that push you up out of your, your comfort zone. She's like, well, I got dancers. <laughs> She's like, I yeah. have somebody that makes music. So this music, like, let's let's mm -hmm. collaborate and figure out how to get this song made. Um, and so that's where it started. We uh, we we made a song uh, with, with the vocalist, uh, one of my good friends from Chicago, Peter Renee, who's an amazing vocalist. Um, awesome. Laid down these vocals, and um, Alex, who works with Noel's company, uh, created the background track. Uh, then we had Liv come in as director of photography um, and mm -hmm. Noelle's company, uh, Never Ending Works, came in and Noelle worked with them on choreography. I designed costumes and jewelry and we got to, we went in the park and we recorded this thing, right? We yeah. put all these layers together um, and made something in response to grief um, mm -hmm. because that was so heavy on my heart this year. I mean, it still has been, not just right. me, of course, but a lot of people. And I was just in this process of losing or just feeling the loss of friends and family members and, you know, I mean, even celebrities are like just folks in the, in the media that I was seeing that right. were with me in some type of way, like they, we were the same age or they also just were artists and they were just beautiful black folks that they left and I felt it in my chest and I was like, yeah. It's like them and then people that I know. And I was like, this is so much grief packed on top of each other that I just don't know what right. to do with it. Um, but like listen to music and sketch and draw and come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and, that's based, and that's what this piece was. Like it was a response right. to all of that and what it feels like to process all that information and like wake up and still do life. Like, mm. <laughs> like mm. how do I log in and check emails now? And like, my heart is broken. Do you know what I right. mean? Um, <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't even know what's up and what's down, but I'm supposed to right. like, host a meeting on Zoom right now. <laughs> and I'm like, what? What the? What? Is
what is happening, right? And right. so it was it was about processing and processing grief. Um, and it was, a, it just felt like a beautiful way to do it. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm super happy with that. It's the first time that I worked in film um, and the first time that I collaborated with that many people, but it felt so right. Um, right. Because for the longest time, I had been wanting to return to making Previously, you know, it was photography or paintings right. or installation work. And it was like mostly solo or like with one or two other artists. And, you know, after that I was teaching or I'm in admin spaces. Right. And, but all I was doing in those spaces was, was collaborating, right? I was working with artists to put on a program or put a panel together or throw a party right. or <laughs> teach a class. Um, <laughs> teach a class here at Pratt or whatever. And I was like, well, it makes sense that the work that I'm making now is a collaboration with a bunch of folks um, right. pull, pulling together um, to just put an idea out into the world. Um, so it felt natural in all those ways, even though it was the first time that I'd ever done something of this <laughs> scale in this particular way. It felt it felt good. So, yeah. And, was, and during that, <laughs> that time, are you still creating at this point in time? Are you still in the creating process or absolutely Absolutely. and still kind of and still working with noel so yeah uh, i just wrapped in the last week um a collaborative piece for james and janie washington foundation Mm -hmm. um and it's a it's a photography kind of installation piece um and and it's about returning to self which is really what this year has been about for me like what does it mean to return (laughs) right to return to myself right in this like living in this city which doesn't always feel supernatural for my body like I do kind of feel like I'm somebody else sometimes when I'm here right (laughs) um what does returning to self mean so returning to a a place where I operate comfortably where Mm. I'm not um putting on any type of facade like I wake up in my body and feel like it's my body (laughs) and when when I'm speaking I feel like my voice is my own it's returning to a place in which I ultimately feel like the fullest most complete version of myself and I'm doing Mm -hmm. the things that like resonate in my in my body I feel like that is what this year has been for me and that is the process of making work this year right um, because like I said, I've always known I was in art, right. but for the past, since I stopped, oh well, yeah, I mean, for the past maybe 10 years or so, I wasn't really producing work mm-hmm. as an artist. I was teaching people how to make it. Right. <laughs> and then I stopped teaching and then I started doing admin work of doing arts programming or, you know, doing a panel to talk about another artist and how they're making work which is creative in a way and it's still working in the arts, but like, that's not why I got, like, that's not how I got here. Like (laughs) all of this started because I wanted to make things and put them out into the world. Right. In in a sense. Yeah. My admin work is kind of creative because I'm at an arts nonprofit, but it doesn't sit on my spirit the same way. Right. And so I'm like, I need to, (laughs) I need to make things because, five-year-old Eve knew she wanted to make things <laughs> right <laughs> and yeah like jewelry yeah I do the jewelry thing I make jewelry that's that's making but it's not the same like it's mm-hmm. not a full expression of like my experiences in the world so right that's yeah, um, that's what it is thank you mm-hmm. if you are uh that's a good way to put it I yeah. get it comment <laughs> yeah y'all can comment if y'all have questions for Eve, y'all got an extra $5,000. Her Venmo and Cash App is posted. I'm just... <laughs> aim high. You know, I'm going to aim high. Like, I'm not going to be like, you got an extra $5. You got an extra $5,000. Her Venmo and Cash App, you know, is posted. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You, the things that resonated with me that you just said, getting back to self, which has been extremely difficult, and I don't even know if I'm there yet. Like, mm-hmm. I'm so afraid to tap into my body right now. Um, what 
one of the scary parts in this latest project of creating photography installations about getting back to stuff. What were the scary moments? The scary moment was like, am I still good at this? Like, Ooh. <laughs> you know what I mean? That part. Like, <laughs> am I still good at this? Is this still right for me? Like, have, am I so out of practice that I don't know what my what my creative voice is? Any, like, what is my voice? How do I find it again? Um, it's all all of that. <laughs> right. Like, like that was the scariest part because it's like, which is <laughs> I'm gonna use the analogy of like I also bought roller skates this year, right? So I used to roller skate all the time <laughs> as a child, right? And I knew it. I remember loving it. Like, yes. for me, I can remember what it feels like to go around that rink, right? But this body right now is different, <laughs> right? <laughs> than like the 14-year-old body that has that memory, right? So even though I know I, I have done it and have loved to do it, what does it feel like now? What yeah. muscles do I need to, do? you know what I'm saying? How do I need to maneuver, you know, what muscles? <laughs> Them muscles are different at a different age. Memory, right? They look different. <laughs> Things look different. Knees a little different. Right. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> they look different. so I think it's that's what it felt like to me. Like, how do I make stuff again? Like, what's the way yeah. that I make things? How do I maybe need to do a little bit differently? What? How do I need to shift? Right? right. Absolutely. <laughs> After you know, not really being in that space for for a while. I think that was right. really, that was really the stress for me. Like, what's how's this gonna look? You know, at, yeah. at, at yeah. thirty nine, at thirty eight, thirty nine. Uh, what's, the, what's the growth? <laughs> what's the... <laughs> right. We got wait, so child, I can't. I bought a jump rope, and my body was like Negro. What? You ain't ten no more. You know, see, big them potatoes get in there. See, I love these comments. <laughs> Jump rope make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You know what? I can't. Um, y'all are funny. Y'all are funny today. Um, today. <laughs> evolve, revolt, repeat. Yes. Yeah. Um, wait a minute, y'all. Wait. I'm gonna do something. I don't do. I'm gonna step away. Hold on. Oh, okay. What's where we going? What's happening? Just wait. <laughs> Just wait. What's going okay. on? What's going on? Wait. Okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> the bottom don't match the top, but it's okay. It's all I just, right. It's all right. It's okay. Uh, so, I had to step away strong. to put this on. The brand is strong. You're... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, like, this is one of my favorite things that I have. It is like sitting somewhere on a mantle. I kid you not. I'm with it. I and support. That's nobody up. touches it but me. As they shouldn't. Let, let it alone. Ain't none of yours. And I need about three more for real. I need about three more. Let's go. Cause I like, I need a big blue one. Let's talk. Anyway, okay, that's a whole other subject, but let's talk about something else. Anyway, we are going to talk about Evolve, Revolt, Repeat. Let's uh, how did that get started? And if y'all didn't know, this is one of these pieces. Yes, this is the, the right. mermaid. This is the mermaid fringe visor, but this one is particularly custom, and I don't make See. it. won't be nothing like that if you order one, okay? Well, Thank right. you. Because right. <laughs> everything is one of a coin, darling. Uh, and then you have the earrings. I see the earrings. Look, the brand is strong. I got my own <laughs> earrings on. I rock me, okay? <laughs> you better. You I better. This one, I rock me all the time. So, no. Anyway, <laughs> um, the brand. Uh, yes, so I make jewelry. That's a thing. The brand came out of my classroom, honestly. Mm. Uh, when I was teaching high school, my advisory mm -hmm. group was all you know, young, young ladies. <laughs> and they were like, Miss Amber. <laughs> Cause that's <laughs> they were high school girls. Okay. They're like, Miss Amber, right. at the end of the year, we want to make little booty shorts for the summer. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, y'all. And so sure. I, I took them to the, 
to like a little uh, the goodwill or whatever around the corner uh -huh. from the school. We got a bunch of old jeans, and I was like, "All right, we're gonna do some distressed denim shorts for y'all for the summer." I love it. Then I was like, "Oh, that's like tie dye. I must add some color to them, make them kind of cute." And so this is the last two weeks of school. Come on with the yes with the website. All right. So it's the last two weeks of school. We are like. I hope I spelled it right. You did. You did. But Good. We, <laughs> yeah, we were like bleaching and dyeing denim and making little shorts for them for the summer. And then I had all this fabric left over. And you know, right. me being, you know, Marquisha's five-year-old Eve, Marquisha's kindergarten. Born, you know, I'm like, <laughs> let me cut this up here and like do a little something. And then I bought some earring hooks and I made myself a pair of earrings. And then I made a couple of pairs of earrings and my coworkers were like, oh, those are kind of cute. Where you get them from? And I'm like, I made it. <laughs> I made it. And we, uh, I sold a couple to them. And then like a market came up a couple months la uh, months later. And I was like, I'm just going to get a table at this market and see, like, see if people want these earrings. Right. It just, it catapulted. And that was six, seven years ago, maybe. Seven years ago mm -hmm. now. And I just have made different styles and then necklaces came and then beaded things came and yeah, it came out of my classroom. I love it. I'm, I'm shout, out them, like... shout out to my little high school students at the time wanting to make booty shorts. Had they never made asked me to make booty shorts, I don't know if I would have been making earrings now, you know. See? <laughs> I'm actually looking on the website now. You have necklaces, you have gift sets. Have you have mermaid visors. You have pins. Mm -hmm. um, it's Christmas time. <laughs> and people. Sale, 30 off. Orders over 40. See, <laughs> the gift sets are everything, though. Aren't they, the, aren't oh. they just? Aren't they oh, just? I don't even have my bracelets. I know. Those are bracelets. The, the, the okay, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. The ringlet. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yes. Yes. Thank you. I I cherish that all. So I just want you to know. Um, thank you. Thank Those you. are things that are tucked <laughs> away so no one can touch. <laughs> so I'm just saying, people, I pinned the website. Y'all just need to purchase and y'all need to support. Um the why is it important for black women to become entrepreneurs? I mean, that's an easy question, but... <laughs> I was like... I mean... Because people are full of bullshit. For, for Black folks in general to understand that wealth comes from multiple streams of income. And yes. wherever you're working is not enough. Um, and I think it's important to invest in our own ideas and services and things that we do. And not right. just give them as gifts to people because we love them. Um, but, but use it to support your life, right? Yes. Um, I think it's just going to teach you how to manage and navigate the world um, and this beautiful capitalist society that we live in, right? Teach you how to be comfortable, right? Yeah. <laughs> how to get to a place where you're a little bit more comfortable, if not anything. So I think that that's, that's it, right? Like yeah. we, 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 as a community, as a culture of people, invest heavily in things and um it would behoove us to invest in ourselves as much as we invest in so that other things so yeah thank you that's real that's real um outside of work and a pandemic what's keeping you in seattle <laughs> you see i had to throw that work and <laughs> pandemic let's let's get those out the way because we already know that's happening so <laughs> <laughs> right now, what's keep, what's keeping me here now is I'm not certain what's next. So for the longest mm. time, I was like, I'm going to come here, I'm going to get my little cute degree, and I'm piece up, things down, down. No. So <laughs> that was not, it didn't work out that way. I landed, you know, opportunities that I was super excited about, and so I stayed. Now I'm here, and I have a partner, and <laughs> they are... Uh, halfway through, you know, their licensing in, in architecture. So, like, we're grounded here at least for a couple more years for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm also just, like, not quite sure, certain 
what's next. I mean, like I said, I, I feel very grounded by Chicago and like it fills my soul in a particular way, but I just right. don't know if I'm, I need to move back there. So I'm just, I'm not quite sure what's next. I know that Seattle is not my forever home. She's cute. I like the girl. She's nice. Um, but I don't, I, don't, I don't particularly want to be here forever. Yes. Um, so yeah, at some point I want to like own a home that's large and I work in the arts. So those two girls don't get along. They're not friends. Um, you live in Seattle. You live in Washington State. That ain't the thing to own a home in, especially if you're working in the arts. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Probably uh, you better give me my shoebox in Seattle. I can barely afford that. <laughs> Come on, boo boo. And I'm not trying to like have housemates forever, like seven strangers pick to, li pick to live in. No, I don't want to live. <laughs> That's not the real world I want, okay? Right, okay. right, right, right. Thank you, okay? This is not an episode of Big Brother. This will not be Big Brother, this for real. Not, do not vote me out of my home. Right, right. We're not right. doing that. Child. I know, I know, I know. Um, what is... What, you, are, you are an art administrator. You work in the arts. Um you kind of have like a little inkling of what's next with black folks in the arts. Do um, I don't know. I'm just going to throw it out there. I think, you know, I, I said don't an know what's like... next for dinner. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't get the line on me, child. <laughs> See, you know, like when you are in arts administration, people think you know, you just like, look, I don't know. If I'm having a paycheck for real, like I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know nothing. I'm just out here trying to figure out. I don't <laughs> look. I I think at this point in my life, like yes, I know things. I went to school, all of that. But like, <laughs> I'm just trying to be less raggedy tomorrow than I was today. Like that Miss is Cleo, true. you're not. So you're saying you're not Miss Cleo. I don't know her. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, you don't call me now. The reading ain't okay. <laughs> I, I can read you, but just not that type. Not that type of reading. I give you a different ooh, one. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I give you a different reading. Yes. Are you? <laughs> you know, is it anything you're excited about that may be coming out of the pandemic? I really don't know myself. I ain't gonna lie. I think right now. This, it's hard to say because I think there was a moment where we were like, what is going on? I don't know what's happening. Exactly. And then, like, things or people started to create in different ways and like, wow, look at all this stuff that we can see online now and like, mm -hmm. look at this cute like behind the scenes access stuff. But I think we're at a point where like, <sighs> okay, I saw right. already like, what else you got? So yeah. I, I guess what I'm, I can't I can't express it in words what it is, but I'm excited to see how artists will pivot now that people are kind of tired of the online scenarios that we've created within the last, you know, six or seven months. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to see how, how we're going to flip it. Like, how are the most creative, <laughs> amazing people, visual artists going to push forward right. the next couple months? Like, what is that going to look like? Especially in like now, I think we're into the winter months where like you're even more indoors. And I think the summer was cute because you can go outside and film something and like dance around in the woods or whatever. But like now it's cold. So what does that look like if like right. your spaces are limited? So I, I'm excited to see what comes next because I can't, I can't call it right now. Like I'm not yeah. sure either. Um, I'm in an interesting space of trying, just trying to figure that out for myself mm -hmm. because okay. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of looking at screens too sometimes. So I'm like, I don't know what we gonna do now. What we gotta like project into the sky or some shit? I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's okay if I curse. Whatever. Um, no, it's okay. I don't it's okay. Know. <laughs> I'm like, is it okay? I don't know. Um, yeah, like, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what's next. Yeah, I, but I def I'm sitting on the edge of my seat because I know somebody's gonna do something that's gonna blow me away. Right, I'm not right. quite sure what it looks like just yet. 
for myself okay. either. Like, <laughs> so I'm in, the, I'm in the sketch pad. I'm like trying to figure out what's next and how, right. how do we shift things and, and tell a different story right now. That's so real. Um, we are coming at the end of our time because I don't like to keep people that long. Projection art for Come real. On. Come on, Staffy, let's do it. Let's 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 for real. Let's, I mean, y'all can make that work. I mean, I I do have a projector at the crib. I just invested in a slide projector, and when I went home to Chicago, I got old slides of my like the old thirty five like millimeter Ooh, slides nice. that work from back in the day. So. We might be onto something. That may be something. I know, you know. I know it might be something. <laughs> right. Maybe a little something. It might be something. Um, I just want to tell you I miss being in space with you. Um I I love being in space with you. Your energy is just your looks when something is bothering you. That's what I love the most. <laughs> I'm twisted that way. Like I love your energy. You always have really great energy, but with that face when something you just be like, uh like it don't hide nothing. I love it so much. <laughs> it got me. Um, <laughs> you know, it, that's the energy that I need. Yes. <laughs> so I, I, I thank you for joining me today for the last of the of this year. Um, I, I I do miss being around you and seeing your face when we are in space with CD form stuff. <sighs> one day this pandemic will be over with and we'll be able to I think the last time I saw you it was on Rainier and me and Marla was driving down the street and we were like hey that was the last time I saw you yes you were going to some uh, island soul oh yeah yeah that's the last time I was like baby. I had to get me it was, just, habanero it was beautiful but sad I was just like hey, okay bye like right <laughs> Keep Danny away from me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let me start. My last question for you is, yes. what is your joy? What is my joy? This, Black people, being in space <laughs> with people laughing. Oh, yes. my gosh. Like, couches, sitting on couches and having conversations. Things like that. <laughs> <laughs> See. Community. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel you. This is not the same. This is. Yeah. <laughs> you I, know, like. Just, like living rooms and couches and like singing yes. with black people just like out of nowhere. Cute little impromptu dance, dance party. You know, I'm, exactly. I'm twerking in my seat because I just need a little like. <laughs> And do a right, 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 right. Oh, I just sounded so old. I said, "Cut a record." Oh. Record on. You know, I do have a record player. I ain't gonna lie. I have I a record just, player. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just mad. I said, "Cut a record." A record Literally, on. Cut a record on. I became my mother in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here choking. Um, thank you all for tuning in and your comments. Uh, Thank you for making me smile this afternoon. My joy is y'all today. Thank you. Thank you, Black people. Thank you so much. I'm grateful to hear your conversation. I miss you, Eve. Y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. I know. Um, <laughs> Eve likes records and slides. Also tells kids to get out of her yard. I do. You know what? I'm about to... <laughs> I just said that today to some kids. I told them to get out of my way. See? They was in the way. I'm Girl, I'm about to say, because they be in the way. Oh, <laughs> don't I get? They get out my way. Right. Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> um, you all have a beautiful holiday season. Uh, CD Farm will be back with you February. We taking some time off. I'm taking some time off. Um, I like what you said. Get back to yourself. I'm gonna try to spend these next few month and a half trying to get back to myself. Um, we will be coming back to you in February with some more programs. Uh, we're gonna be dropping some little nuggets that um, you know, changing some things up because, like you said, you know, we kind of get sick of being online right now. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> you know, like I'm just gonna bring the honesty. Like online programming is great for a minute, but the minute has 
Passed. Passed. <laughs> As someone who hosts an online show, it passed. Right. <laughs> I mean, somebody who puts, I'm, I'm in charge of online programming, and I'm just like, I too. Yeah, what do we do? What do we do? Right. But we will pivot. We will continue making more will, than yes. some yes. type of, somehow, some type of way. Right, right. The work we always have. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. I will see y'all in 2021. Be safe. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Yes. Moisturize. <laughs> That's what I did earlier today before I got on the screen with you. I was scrubbing and moisturizing and shaving and then putting some paint on the face a little bit because right. I was looking exhausted today. Drink water, moisturize, okay? See? <laughs> Not wine, but water. It's water. You know. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Bye, Eve. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a beautiful, bye. beautiful day. <laughs>